What's up everybody, it's your girl Dolly XO and from your city intro you don't know what's about to take place. So, and of course from the host of Hits, we have the hit producer himself, Noel One Time. Thank you guys so much for supporting me. It has been a real journey to season 2 and to get everything together and to just like put everything in one. It has been a real task. So if you have supported me through that, At 24 years old, Donna Lee was living her best life. She was what some people would call a boss babe, young, beautiful and ambitious. She knew where she wanted to go in life and she was working hard to get there. But sometimes when you mix with the wrong crowd, you end up getting derailed. And in this case, you could end up dead. Donnelly Donaldson, the daughter of a Jamaican mother and a Bahamian father, grew up in her island home, Jamaica, and was always quite bold and energetic. She excelled in many areas throughout her school life and copped many trophies and certificates, making her parents quite proud. She went to Kingston Technical High School and rose to the highest position of a student to become the head girl in her final year of high school. Donna, as she was affectionately called, loved life and knew just how to live to the fullest. She never shied away from the spotlight, so it came as no surprise that Donna took the center stage, making herself into a social media influencer in her early 20s and becoming even more popular after appearing on a local reality show, which showcased her fierce yet attractive personality. And according to her mother, she still had ambitions to become a medical doctor like her father. Not only was Donna bold, beautiful, and book smart, but she was also caring, and her mother was a first-hand recipient of this care and attention from her daughter. I'm a diabetic. Every morning she would take, she would stick my finger and take my blood sample to see if I'm doing well. Sometimes I have to hide and eat because she watched everything I eat. She take me to the doctor at all times. She would give me anything. Unfortunately, matters of the heart can sometimes come into conflict with what's logical and reasonable. And sometimes love or fear makes even the best of us do crazy things. That seems to have been the case with Donna Lee, who was caught in a sordid love triangle with not one, but two police officers, Noel Maitland, her boyfriend, and the mother of his eight-month-old child, also a police officer. A triangle that many believe may have cost her her life. Donna and her mother, Sophia Logue, had settled in for the night in the room they shared at their Hagley Park home in Kingston. The same room where they enjoyed so many laughs together and even some tears when Donna's phone rang. It was Monday, July 11th. Just the day before, Donna had celebrated her 24th birthday and was still in a celebratory mode. But that's not why she proceeded to get up out of bed, because her mother had seen it happen many times before. 
Sophia didn't like the idea of her daughter leaving the house so late at night with a man she didn't think was right for her. He would call at odd hours as he did on that faithful Monday night and Donna would jump up out of bed and ready herself to be picked up by her cop boyfriend, Noel Maitland. That night, Sophia watched as Noel's black BMW drove away on this road into the dead of night. I watched him drove away with my daughter because I got up out of bed. I'm always upset when she goes with him. And I, I wanted to just grab her back that night. And I said, Lord, protect my child. I don't know why I was praying that night. And I watched her drove up the road in his black BMW. The next morning, Sophia was quite relieved to get a call from her daughter telling her she would be home later that day. When I spoke with her in the morning, I felt okay that she was going to be home. Then, because she left in her casual wear, she didn't bring anything with her but her bag and her handbag. So when I speak with her in the morning, I was more comfortable feeling that I hear from her, she's gonna come home. On Tuesday night, when Donna didn't come home as promised, her mother, Sophia, sensed that something was wrong. But she continued to look forward to her daughter's return the next day. According to Sophia, Whenever Noel picked up her daughter, he would later take her back to the house. So, it was rather strange when on Wednesday she received a call from Noel asking her if she had heard from Donna. He called me at about 11 o'clock and he said to me, Mom, you hear from Donna Lee? I said, what sort of question that you're asking me if I hear from Donna? You do expect me to hear from Donna? I said, you're supposed to be asking me to speak with Donna. He said, um, what, I said, what time she leave your house? Did she ever leave your house or she's there? He said, Mumi, calm down. We, we have an argument. We had a dis disagreement. Nothing big. And she was upset, I was upset that she left the house. Noel Maitland lives at Chelsea Apartments in Kingston, which is where it is said that Donnelly Donaldson spent the night with him before she disappeared. The two met on common ground, the party scene about three years earlier. The relationship they shared was oftentimes rocky and on and off. It is also quite obvious that whilst it was no secret that Donnelly was his girlfriend, Noel was dabbling in other puddles and making quite the splash. Some say Donnelly was not his main woman, but that the police woman constable was. In fact, he and the woman constable have an eight-month-old child together. One thing is for sure, these women knew about each other and they were not playing nice. On more than one occasion, the women are said to have had verbal and physical confrontations. He have a girlfriend who is a police from Alfred Tree. She just have a baby for him at about eight months now. Every time she goes to the house, the police woman shows up and they have physical and verbal uh, uh, conversation. And, 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 and one time my daughter came home with a scar on her neck. <gasps> One may ask the question, 
How does a police constable manage to afford a luxury apartment and a BMW on a meager government salary? Well, as it turns out, the constable is not just a constable, but also a producer who wields a lot of influence in the music business. Noel, one time as he is known on the party scene, is no small sprat. Word on the street is that Donna Lee and the woman constable were just two of the women the cop was involved with. And when it comes to the policeman's temperament, some say he has quite the temper. You guys could remember the other day when I was ranting, I was venting about a policeman that uh, choked me, choked me out and abused me. It's the same policeman that I see on the photo. In a missing person's case, the first 48 hours are the most critical in the quest to find the missing person and in the evidence gathering process. But in the case of the missing social media influencer, the first 48 hours may be considered a missed opportunity for investigators. And the response of the police to the case has been under public scrutiny from the beginning, sparking much outrage resulting in several protests at various locations in Kingston. In the first 48 hours, no evidence was collected from the last known location of Donna Lee. What's even stranger is that none of the individuals who were possibly the last to have seen her was questioned. In fact, within the first few days, the spouse or partner of a missing person is usually identified as a person of interest or suspect even until it has been proven that they had no part to play in the person going missing. But strange enough, Donnelly's boyfriend was not named a person of interest, and it wasn't until the 20th day of her being missing that Noel Maitland was arrested and then charged days later with her murder, even though a body had not been found. And up to that point, the police had not yet interviewed the third person in the love triangle. In fact, she had to be summoned to an interview with the Independent Commission of Investigations, which was scheduled for the day after Noel was charged. A story filled with holes and inconsistencies will raise the eyebrow of any well-thinking person. And the inconsistencies in Noel's story stick out like a sore thumb. He said that while at his home on Tuesday, they had a heated quarrel and Donna left at around 11 o'clock in the morning. But yet, he heard a conversation that took place that same day between Donna and her father hours later. Also, at about 4 o'clock on Tuesday afternoon, Donna spoke with her brother and she was still at the apartment. And how did she leave? He claimed that Donna called a friend to pick her up. He also claimed he didn't know which friend had picked her up and neither did he see the car she left in. What makes this story even more mind-boggling is that alleged eyewitnesses have said that during the time period when Donna Lee was at Noel's apartment, two women went inside the apartment. 
One of the women is believed to be the mother of Noel's child. The same sources also reported hearing shouts and sounds of things breaking and smashing soon after the women entered the apartment. Donnelly Donaldson has been presumed dead. And there are many rumors and speculations, but nothing is conclusive. After all, there has not been a confession, and no one who may have been inside the apartment has come forward to tell us how Donnelly was killed. In the beginning, some presumed that she was strangled, but based on some developments and mention of blood evidence in a sofa and on a curtain, some are saying she was possibly stabbed or hit in the head. The use of a gun may not have entered many people's minds based on the fact that neighbors have not reported hearing any loud explosions. The fact is, this story is unfolding as we speak. What I can say is that based on our investigation, we believe that Ms. Donaldson was killed on Tuesday the uh, Tuesday the 12th of July, any time between 4 and 8 in the evening. And this is supported by, as I indicated before, forensic and, this, and um, technology. We have not yet um, determined the reason for our, our death. But what we can say is that she was killed based on our investigation. I know someone had asked regarding the likelihood of us recovering her body. We continue to pursue our investigation and um, we have done several um, operations including going to the River City dump um, where we did an extensive search and we came up with nothing. So we'll continue as we get the lead. I can't come to a, a, a decision whether or not our body will be found. We hope that would be the, the end game, that our body is found, and so that the family can actually bring closure to an unfortunate um, situation. If you know something, say something. There is a family who is suffering. If you know what happened to Donnelly Donaldson, please help bring her family some closure. <laughs>